Hi, I'm Lynn Chamberlain. Welcome to this episode of Camera Outdoors. We're in southern Utah on the Ponsagant, one of the premium deer hunting areas in the entire United States. We're here to photograph large mule deer bucks in the rut. The Ponsagant is comprised of approximately 1,200 square miles of prime mule deer habitat located in extreme southwestern Utah. Elevations vary from 9,300 feet in the north to just below 7,000 feet in the south and offer both winter and summer range to one of the nation's most migratory herds of mule deer. The combination of genetics and habitat found in the Ponsagant have produced many trophy class bucks. For the past 20 years or so, the area has been managed as a limited entry trophy hunting unit. Southwestern Utah is a desert and seldom receives more than 10 inches of rainfall at any given year. The problem is particularly acute in the lower elevations where the deer spend the winter. Behind the trees, that was a nice deer, a nice buck. Very concerned about getting that doe out of here, obviously because we're here in a pickup not too excited about staying close. But I've got some plans that are gonna help us get very close to these big mule deer bucks. To conserve the available water, a system of water catchment facilities called guzzlers has been constructed. A guzzler is nothing more than a large apron that collects rainwater and channels it into a tank, which in turn distributes the water into a drinker for the use of the animals in the area. The presence of this extra water has dramatically increased not only the number of deer, but other wildlife that can live in this harsh environment. Luckily for wildlife photographers, these drinkers act like a virtual magnet for deer, especially during a drought, which is exactly why I've come to this particular location today. One of the important tools of a photographer can be a blind for some types of photography. The whole idea behind this is it conceals the human form. It makes you look like something other than what you are. It can conceal movement and animals look at it. It's not moving, it's not threatening, and they feel comfortable around it. That's the purpose of a blind. Now it will not conceal smell and it will not conceal noise. So you want to be careful what kind of food for example, that you bring into a blind and you want to be very quiet and very attentive when you're sitting in a blind working with animals. If you thought that was good, wait till you see what's coming up next on Lynn Chamberlain's Camera Outdoors. Shooting out of a blind requires a lot of patience. You know, a lot of your time is spent just sitting and watching with just maybe a few seconds where you have a flurry of activity and then things will go quiet for a little while and then you'll watch for a little longer and then you have a more, a more uh, 
a few more seconds of activity. Uh, that's how it goes. Early November is the mating season for mule deer. It can be very interesting just to be a fly on the wall and watch the action as a buck meets a doe and it's love at first sight. Is it true that I've lost you? Am I not the only one after all this pain and sorrow? Darling, think of what you've done. Heart to heart, dear, how I need you. Like the flowers need to do Loving you has been my life But I can't believe we're really through Is it true that I've lost you? Am I not the only one After all of this pain and sorrow Darling, think what you've done Right now the rut is starting, which means that the mule deer are starting their mating behaviors. They, the bucks tend to fight one another. They uh, spend time looking for does that are coming into heat. And really they aren't as wary as they are during the hunts when they're looking for hunters and being careful. They lose some of that. And so it becomes a real opportunity for photography because you can get closer to the animals and they're uh, just more, they're much more accessible. <clears throat> We've been in the blind for about four hours today. We've had a lot of deer come in, get a drink of water and walk away. Lots of them uh, dozing fawns, a couple of nice bucks. Um, the neat thing is, is they come in moving really slowly, looking around to see if there's any problem, but they just behave as if they, as if you weren't here at all. And it's fun to be able to watch them, even the does and fawns, to behave, behaving as if we weren't here. Uh, and seeing what they would do uh, in the wild when nobody's around, it's really kind of interesting to be a part of their world without really affecting their world. Very, very interesting to see what they do. Oh, there comes a couple of does right there. Oh, it's a doe and a really nice buck. This is a nice shot of a buck, but not a great photograph. Notice how the antler details are lost in the busy background produced by the tree behind the deer. With a little patience, the deer moved just enough to isolate the antlers against a dark background. This produced a better view of the antlers and a nicer view of the deer altogether. But still, the pose is just somewhat static. By keeping your eye in the viewfinder and your finger on the shutter release and watching the fine movements of the body of the animal, you'll notice subtle adjustments in the position of the deer, which eventually rendered this photograph with the articulated limb that adds implied movement and energy to the final photograph. Well, we saw some great deer, but we're gonna head to a new area and find some more right after this on Lynn Chamberlain's Camera Outdoors.
This is an absolutely perfect setup. This blind is set up here before we got here, and it's been here for years, actually, and made up of natural materials, just these uh, pinion and juniper boughs that are stacked up in front. It blends in perfectly with the surroundings and allows you to stay close to the deer as they come into this Mustang pond. Mustang Pond turned out to be an ideal photographic destination. Deer came from miles around to get a drink in the evening light. The annual rut and the drought conditions that Utah is experiencing now serve to attract the does to the watering holes, and the bucks follow the does. This provides a perfect occasion for any photographer who's patient enough to sit in a blind and snap the photograph he's looking for. My favorite wildlife lens is this 100 to 400 millimeter zoom lens. It gives me all the magnification that normally I need to take great wildlife photographs. But sometimes, working from a blind, that 400 millimeters may just not be quite enough. At times like that, I like to use this 1.4 teleconverter. I put it between the camera and the lens, and then it gives me all the magnification I need to get close up and personal with just about any type of wildlife. When you work out of a blind, you want to make sure that you come prepared. We've been sitting here for almost three hours, and it's cold. So you take plenty of clothes to wear, layers, something to cover every piece of exposed skin that you can, because as you sit here in the blind, you're inactive. It doesn't allow your body to move and to, to keep the temperature up that way, so you need to warm it with clothes. 
this has worked out great today. We've had some beautiful shots. The light has been spectacular. The deer have been very cooperative. And we've been able to sit here at Mustang Pond in this natural blind, get some great photographs of some beautiful mule deer. Stay with us for more on Lynn Chamberlain's Camera Outdoors. Again, I'm changing, changing other men. Many viewers have asked what it is that I keep in my camera bag. Everything I need when I jump out of the truck, if I'm going to spend five minutes shooting something or if I'm going to be gone for two hours, is contained in this bag. It might be a good idea just to go over a few things. Of course, one of the major essentials, if you're going to take photographs, you got to have a camera. I like to keep mine attached to the 100 to 400 millimeter lens all the time. Primarily, uh, when I'm in the field, I'm looking for wildlife. This is my wildlife lens, so that's my favorite one. This is what I keep put together all the time. This is my normal lens, 100 to 400 millimeter zoom. Then, I also like to carry with me a moderate zoom. This is a 24 to 105 millimeter zoom lens. And one of the really nice things about this lens is it has the ability to focus close. It's a macro zoom. If I'm going to be photographing flowers or insects or any scenic that I don't have to be really wide, then this fits the bill very well. Of course, 24 millimeter lens, I'm shooting digitally with a D-series Canon camera, so I have a 1.6 magnification factor. So that 24 millimeters isn't as wide as it needs to be for wide scenics, but for close-ups and for moderate scenics and for general photography, this is a great lens. The other lens that I carry in my bag is a 10 to 22 millimeter wide angle lens. Now this one is when I want to get really wide, obviously. It's a great lens for photographing beautiful wide angle scenics. It takes in almost 180 degrees of coverage when you have it at, at, at 10 millimeters, which is as wide as it goes. So this is a great lens to have in your camera bag when you're gonna go out and you stumble on something that you might wanna take a beautiful scenic of. So in my camera bag, I have the 10 millimeter to 20 millimeter zoom, 22 millimeter zoom, the 24 to 105 millimeter zoom lens and the camera mounted to a 100 to 400 millimeter lens. So I have every focal length covered between 10 and 400 millimeters just by grabbing this bag and taking it with me. Really enjoy receiving letters and emails from our, our viewers. Paige from Buffalo, New York wrote to me. She said, Dear Lynn, I'm very interested in photographing animals, but I can't leave home as often I'd li as I'd like to. Can you give me some tips? about how to improve my opportunities close to home. Well, let me show you just a couple of things that can help you get some better photographs right in your backyard. In answer to your question, Paige, one of the things that I really love to do and my yard is to set up a bird feeder. This bird feeder was made for me and it's it's been here for several years and I keep bird seed in it most of the time and a lot of birds are attracted to this. Also happens to be next to my pond. So I've got a water source and a food source and plenty of cover. So that's three of the habitat items that wildlife need right here. Food, water and shelter very close and because of that I get a lot of birds in here. It's also set up really close to my home. So I can sit on my front porch with my camera and I can draw birds into this and photograph them. It's a nice bird feeder, but it's not really conducive to great photographs. So what I like to do is spruce things up just a little bit. I got an old stick that I found on my lawn. I'm gonna put it right down in here in the bush so that it's fairly rigid. And now the birds will come in here and use that as a perch. And this makes a very natural, good looking perch for the birds to be on while they're waiting their turn at the feeder. Now let's back off and let the birds come in and get some photographs.
caution when you're shooting in a situation such as this off your front porch at a bird feeder, you need to be very careful about choosing your background. Um, just to the left of my shot here, for example, I have my gazebo that's all painted white. And it looks really nice, but it's not necessarily conducive to a, a nice bird photograph. So I have to place my tripod and my camera in an area such that my background is this nice, beautiful green bush behind it, which looks very nice and provides a very neutral background and an uh, uncompetitive background for these little birds. So be careful, watch your backgrounds. You can get some great photographs right off your front porch. Well, that's it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed our trip to southern Utah and the beautiful Ponsagant, and the opportunity that we had to photograph these magnificent mule deer bucks. Until next time, keep your camera ready to go and join us again on Lynn Chamberlain's Camera Outdoors.